This home is a Tudor Revival home built in 1927. Uh, we're the third owners here. So it really has not changed very much from the, uh, the day that the, uh, they first put a key in the door and the, the first owners moved in. This is a two bedroom home and two very modest bedrooms. It's uh, unique in that it has a very high pitched roof. That's, that's uh, part of the style architecturally. Uh, it has a rolled roof so that the eaves are rolled, the edges roll over. Uh, and also the cove ceilings, uh, the plaster work inside, all of that is really, really very reminiscent of that, uh, of that style and the revival of that style. Mr. Ashurst worked at the refinery. He was a white collar worker at the refinery and um, may have had a hand in designing some of the house. There are a few homes with, uh, with this architectural style, but they were not um, uh, homes that were especially common. There seemed to be a number of uh, variations. Uh, a lot of the details of this, uh, this house are seen in some of the other houses that are similar. You have the sconces, which are unique, the chandelier work, um, the batch elder tiles, that sort of thing. So you'll see some of that in some of the other homes, but nothing that is a duplicate, not like it was um, a tract house. In this part of Old Torrance, there seem to have been the homes that are um, quite large, have a number of bathrooms, many bedrooms, where the management of the various industries in Torrance would have lived. Uh, then you have the folks like uh, the people that lived in, in this house, kind of the white collar workers. And then people who were um, actually getting the work done uh, in places like the steel mill and at the refinery or, or the kind of average blue collar workers. This home, I believe, was probably a rather expensive home for the time, 1927. It was $7,300. It's a very small, big house. We have a formal dining room. We have a, a breakfast nook. Um, it has uh, a wonderful front porch and a side porch. Um, the, f the living room is of a nice scale. So it's as though they've taken a large house and kind of shrunk it down. They put all of the amenities in to kind of give it a, a nice uh, elegance and warmth to it. Certainly um, uh, the features that we appreciate would be the original mailboxes in there where it, nobody receives just letters anymore. The windows and the doors are also one of the features that are particular to um, the uh, Tudor Revival that they are curved, so both in the um, uh, second bedroom and in the living room you have these wonderful curved windows. So this is the original refrigerator, or the ice box is actually what it was. The ice man would come in through the back porch and uh, he wouldn't have to come into the house. He'd just come into what is now the laundry room and there's a little access door so he'd have his block of ice with him and he'd open that access door and slip it into this middle section right here. So here we have the original the original uh, ironing board, right? It's always great for a quick press when you've got to go out. But what would you do with your hot iron back in the day? Well, of course you had a place where you could put it. This would come out and the hot iron would end up resting there and cooling off when you went off to church or off to your great social event. Batchelder was a, a great craftsman and worked in uh, ceramics, all sorts of things in ceramics, but really is known for tiles. And uh, his studio, his pottery, was set up in Pasadena. And you could go there, you could look through a catalog, which would be paintings, drawings of, of the various kinds of tiles, and select what you wanted. So if you had an English style house such as this, a Tudor style house, you'd have this small, low uh, hearth, and then you would have this scene that is a scene of, a, of various countrysides. Um, there's a waterfall, there's the moon, there's the the kind of country cottage and the hills in the background and some oak trees growing. And so you would have selected something like that because it goes with the architectural style of the house. When we got the house originally, the fireplace had been painted. So all of the fine work that you see on the hearth and, and around the, uh, the fireplace was, uh, was a mess. Same with many of the uh, uh, wood surfaces. They had been painted or they hadn't been taken care of. I think that there's a certain sense of responsibility when you walk into a place like this and you see that it's very close to original and it's uh, as old as it is. This home is considered by many to be a historic treasure. Uh, that it, it is um, recognized as having a, um, uh, a place in the history of the city when the city was starting to um, do well financially in what were rather difficult times. And so when people see these homes and recognize that they've been around for 70, 75, 80 years, some of them older, uh, it, it's, it really is a, an opportunity for them to um, find a pride in place, that they can um, recognize that their city was established uh, quite a while ago 
and it, it uh, thrived quite nicely. And they're a benchmark.